glad to be back with you. I had a request the other day to talk about structural vibrations, and I thought that was a pretty good topic for a video, so here we go. Now, lots and lots of things vibrate, and essentially all structures vibrate, so it's an important thing to know about. Um, structures that vibrate too much can, can be considered to have failed, even though they haven't structurally failed. Imagine a building that sways back and forth too much in a, in a breeze or uh, even in an earthquake. If it sways back and forth due to wind, even though there's n not really any danger, even though there's no imminent structural failure, it could freak people out and the, st the structure could be considered to have failed in some way. Or imagine a, uh, let's see, how about a, a, the grandstands, the, the bleachers in a stadium. What if people are in those bleachers and they sway back and forth? They vibrate because of the dynamic load of all the people in them. Even if that structure doesn't mechanically fail, which is good because all those people would get hurt, it might still freak people out and be considered to have failed. So those are just two examples. But everything vibrates. Cars vibrate, planes vibrate, ships vibrate. And so there's some basic structural concepts that if you can understand, help you analyze and help you uh, understand how these structures behave. Now, I, I'm trying to put together the simplest demo I can here. So I've got this large bolt and I've tied it to some rubber bands here. And this is, let's, let's try something here. Let's hold this up where you can see it. If I pull this down, there, you can see that vibrate just a little. And note about how fast, you know, how, what the, how long it takes to go through an oscillation. I'm going to try it again here. There you go. See, that's about the same. One of the things that, about st structures as they vibrate is they vibrate at very specific frequencies. And if I choose to change something about this structure, and I'll hold this up here closely so you can see it, it's just a bunch of rubber bands tied together and a large nut and bolt uh, hanging on the end of it for weight. Let's try something here. I've got this uh, got right there that vibrates at a certain frequency. Let me do this. Let me, let me choke up a little bit on this and I'll use a much smaller portion of rubber band. I will have changed the stiffness, increased the stiffness by making the rubber band shorter. Remember that AE over L term? Well, there we go. Now it vibrates faster than it did before. Okay. Well, let's try something else. I'm going to remove the nut from the bolt and so I've got these two parts here. This is pretty heavy, so let me take that away and go back to about where I was before. Now it vibrates a little faster. Let's go up to here, and it vibrates faster yet. Okay. So what I'm trying to show you is that the mass and the stiffness combine to set the, the resonant frequency, the vibrational frequency of a structure. And the easiest way to do that, now that we've seen it, let's write a really, really simple equation and explain pretty much what's going on here. Here's pretty much the system that I just showed you. There's a mass and a spring there. So there's spring stiffness K and a mass M. Well, we know that sum of the forces equals MA. Well, that's really MX double dot, right? The acceleration is the second derivative of position. And let's say also there's a force here that's a, a function of time. And there's also a weight there, okay? So let's do this. Some of the forces equals mx double dot. Well, let's see. There's weight, okay? And plus f of t, that, you know, like there's a, a time-dependent force acting on it. And then the spring is going to be pushing up that way. So minus kx equals mx double dot. Now, it turns out, I'm not going to go, this is, I'm not going to be uh, too specific about the mathematics here. It turns out that the weight acting on the, on the uh, spring, the, the, the static weight of the mass here, doesn't change the resonant frequency any, so I don't have to put that in there. Later, if you want to run through the mathematics yourself, you'll find out it doesn't matter. Okay, so here's what I've got. Well, let me, let me write this out slightly differently. Mx double dot plus kx equals f of t, okay? So the mass times the acceleration, that's that stuff right up there, plus the external force from the spring now equals the force applied to the weight, all right? And this is called an equation of motion, all right? If you describe, if you solve this equation, you're going to find out how that weight moves. Now, I, one thing I didn't describe here was what x is. 
I'm going to say x is positive down, all right? And we can measure it. Let's measure it right. We'll measure it the weight there, all right? So this is, a, this is an equation of motion. If I solve that, it describes how the weight moves. Now, see that time derivative there, the second derivative? This is a differential equation, differential equation of motion, if you want to say it that way. Now, if you solve a differential equation, you get a function. You know if you solve an algebraic equation, you get a number? This is a differential equation. You solve this, you get a function, and that function will be x of t. x of t tells me how that weight moves. All right? So in solving a differential equation, I'm trying to find a function x of t that makes this equation true. Well, in order to know that, I've got to know what f of t is. So let's, let's pretend one thing. Let's go back to my weight here. And rather than applying an external force in it, you know, it's a function of time, I'm going to pull down and just let it go like I did before. Okay, now mathematically what that means is that I'm going to pull down, I've got an initial condition, but after that the force goes to zero. Okay, so let's say that that goes to zero. Okay, and this is this will be what's called free vibration. Okay, which means you've you've taken your structure and you've excited it somehow. I've hit it, I've pushed it, I've tweaked it somehow, and now I'm just letting the the mass and the stiffness trade energy back and forth. All right. Well, we know from uh, experience with differential equations, lots and lots of people have looked at equations that look like this and try different solutions, try different functions of x to see which one makes this true. And somebody at some point, I wish I know who, but I don't, might have been Newton or Leibniz or one of those guys, or Gauss or Euler or Lagrange, who knows, found out that if you say x of t equals a sine omega t, that equation solves that equation. If I substitute this into there, this function makes that expression true. So this is the solution to that differential equation. Right? Now, because this is a solution to that differential equation, I can, I'm going to do a couple of things here. In order to substitute that in, I have to take a couple of derivatives. Okay, well the derivative of a sine omega t is omega a, the, sine of, the derivative of sine is cosine, omega t, all right, so there's the first derivative, but that's the second derivative, so let's just take one more derivative here, make sure I'm going to stay in the frame while I'm in business here, okay, well the second derivative, let's take the derivative of that again, now the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I'm going to wind up with minus omega squared a sine omega t, right, so there's, there's my assumed value, or my assumed function for x, and I know this because people long ago realized that this equation makes that equation true, so this is a solution to that differential equation. Take a couple of derivatives here. Well, let's just substitute that in and see what happens. I'm going to go over here and do this. So if I say m minus m omega squared a sine omega t, all right, that's that term there, okay, and I've substituted in minus omega squared a, wherever there was x double dot, plus k times a sine omega t equals zero. All right? Well, those two both show up there. I can, I can divide that, those out if I want. Um, let's see. And I'm going to wind up with, let's see, k minus m omega squared equals zero. All right, well, let's say I want to solve for omega. Omega equals the square root of k over m. And that's the resonant frequency. Okay, it's generally called a natural frequency or sometimes it's called an eigenvalue because if you solve, this is an eigenvalue equation that you're solving. And this is in radians per second, right? If you want to convert that to frequency, then it's just 1 over 2 pi square root of k over m. And that's frequency in hertz. But the idea here, the important thing to note, is that stiffness and mass both matter. They both tell you what the re are important in telling you what the resonant frequency is going to be. So unless I make a change to my structure, it's always going to have a resonant frequency defined by k and m. 
So if K is big, which I make by making the spring really short, okay, it gets harder to stretch, okay? I can't even, I can't get the balance there. There we go. A lot of damping here. So there's a frequency. If I make K low by making the spring really long, see how the frequency went down a lot? Okay, let's go one further. Let's add mass. Okay, when K went down, F went down. When M goes up, K is going to go down. So I'm going to increase M by putting this bolt back, or nut back on the bolt, make the mass higher, and get back up here again. Now, I'm not really measuring this. Wow, I can't get this. My arm is not long enough to keep this in the frame. Now, hopefully, if you're counting frames, hopefully that's even lo lower. I'm not counting it, but that seems like it must have gone. Whoops. Standing on my tiptoes here too. There you go. Okay, and if I want the frequency to go up again, I'll make the spring a lot shorter, or my, my, my rubber band shorter, which makes it stiffer. And hopefully that made it a little frequency go up. Let's make it go up some more. Okay, there we go. So let's let's talk about where we've been here. We start out with this very simple system of a spring and a mass. Okay, we wrote that. Newton's law, really, F equals MA, wrote it out as a differential equation with free decay, with no, ex, no uh, driving force, assumed a solution, and I didn't assume that by just guessing. Somebody else did the guessing and got it right, so I just get to use the result of their work. Realized that's the solution, Substitute, did the derivative so I could substitute it in, substituted it in, A sine omega t appears in both, uh, terms, so I don't need to consider that, and I've got now, now down to this, solve that, and that's the natural frequency. If I want to change the natural frequency, I need to change the structure. Think about a vibrating string on, say, a harp or a guitar or a piano. The reason those work as musical instruments is because every time we pluck those strings, they make the same frequency, every time. And it's not just some random collection of frequencies, it's a collection of frequencies determined by the mass and the stiffness of the string. Right? And so there's, there's your brief introduction to structural vibrations. We'll do more in other videos. I hope this helps.